We're gonna have to fix this. Our mainsail is in really bad condition. It has become weak and rips far too easily, yet it is our main form of propulsion, and we are about to set off on a 6,500 mile passage across the Indian Ocean. You can see that the stitching is still really good, but the fabric itself is becoming really weak where it's getting any pinch points, and it just causes it to tear um, a long way, and because there's no strength in it, if we get a rip like this, there's a potential that it could take out the whole main. There's absolutely no way this would have got us across the Indian Ocean. In this episode, we visit one of the largest sail lofts in the world in search of a new mainsail for Florence. In the last three and a half years, we have sailed halfway around the world on our 37-foot boat, Florence, exploring new countries, new cultures, and sharing our adventure along the way. Time has come to deal with the major problem that we have been carrying for some time on Florence. We've been patching this mainsail for quite some time now, probably about the last 3,000 miles. Today we're taking this off and we're going to take it into a sail loft here in Phuket in Thailand to get measured up for a brand new one. This stack pack which protects the mainsail when it's down gets even more UV than the mainsail itself so you can see it's in even worse condition so we're going to take this in and get this replaced as well. In fact, we're taking all of Florence's sails into the loft today. If one sail has died, then the others probably aren't far behind. This is the first time we've taken the sails off the boat. Up until now, we've made all the repairs ourselves on board. That is a lot of sails, and unfortunately, it's shallow here, so we have to anchor a long way out. Oh, and the outboard is on the sick list so rowing is the only option. If you've been watching our previous videos, you'll probably know that we've been suffering with UV degradation on our mainsail, which is causing it to kind of fall apart and we've been having to patch it. We've been sailing with that for about the last 3,000 miles, and the time has finally come with somewhere where we can do something about it. So today, we've come to Roly Tasca Sails in Phuket, Thailand, to see about getting some new sails for Florence. Back when we first showed that we had problems with our mainsail in our videos, some of you made a comment below the video recommending that we come and try Roly Tasker sales. And it's thanks to those recommendations that we're actually here today. So thank you. impressive loft. It's actually one of the biggest sail lofts in the world. It's absolutely spotless. There's so many people working here and it's just a hive of activity.
On average, they finish about 20 sales per day and one sale of average size takes about 10 days. So that's about 200 sales in production at one time. So they don't just make the sails here, they actually make some of the parts that go onto the sails. They've got their own plastic moulding machines which are turning out sail lugs. They've got a huge selection of sailcloth here from all the major manufacturers, all in stock. About $1.5 million worth in here. So this is Sven, the CEO of Roly Tasca Sales, and Sven's kindly invited us in to Roly Tasca and offered to sponsor us with a full suit of sales for Florence, for which we are incredibly honoured. Thank you, Sven. Welcome. Well, I think we share the same passion and we are very happy to support you. Thank you. Now that we don't need our mainsail anymore, I can show you how bad the UV damage have really got and how fragile the material is. So we keep getting these little weak points where the sail's just got a crease in it. And if I just push my fingers through. That's and here, it. that's it. Can't quite do it like that, but on these weak points here, it's just gone. Stop it, that's all my sail. There's absolutely no way this would have got us across the Indian Ocean. It's amazing it's lasted as <laughs> much as it has. It's stopped, stopped on one of our patches. <laughs> So Sven, you've seen the state of our mainsail and how weak it is. What's caused that? That's a typical UV damage. We see that very often here in the tropics in Thailand, but also Caribbean Seychelles, every place is with, with lots of UV pressure. So the sun eats up the yarns of the sailcloth, and once they are eaten up, it, you can just tear it very quickly. And once you can tear it very quickly, it's beyond repair. So because if you stitch it and patch it, it breaks next to it. So at that stage, where you are, uh, say it was but my two years old daughter can tear it easily yeah. and it's gone. So what would you recommend for the new mainsail and particularly for blue water cruising sails? You need to have a stronger construction. First of all the question is what sailcloth do we use and we would use in your application a sailcloth with very strong fill and warp yarns so strong yarns in both directions yeah. so the sun needs longer time to eat them up. Um, the downturn is a bit more stretched, but that's for blue water causing not important. Important is tear and your wee resistant. Okay. That's number one. And the second point is you need to have a strong construction, strong corner patches, and uh, strong construction with a trimpler leech on the mainsail, because all the loads are in the leech and in the head. And um, also some weaving patches for your genoa, because uh, you weave them, and once you weave them, you destroy it, the shape. So once you get some weaving patches, you have stronger material where you weaved in and the sail will last longer. Is there anything else that you could suggest that would help us improve the length of life for our Genoa? Yeah, not only life, also performance. So you have 135% Genoa, so yeah. in stronger winds you furl it in. So if you furl it in 20-30% it deforms, sail shape is not optimum. So what you need is an inner stay sail. So an inner stay sail with an inner force day, that's the best way. Yeah. So in strong winds you can take it out and use the inner, inner force day. So the Genoa will be longer lasting, but also the stay sail will have a nice and flat sail shape. So yeah. you will be less healing, more performance, more safety. That sounds great. In discussion with Sven about the sailing that we've got coming up and the sails we've got on board, it became apparent that really there is a hole in our sail inventory. We only have the Genoa up front here for going upwind and once it gets really windy we have to furl it or part furl it and once you've got it part furled to a certain point the sail just loses all of its shape and becomes a bit of a bag. You can't do much about that, that's just because of it being furled. So the way to fix that is to have a stay sail. We've never had one of these before so we've got to measure up for one. So Ben's given us a tape and we're going to measure up now. So we just need a few simple measurements. We've hoisted a long tape up to the top of where the stay sail goes on this inner force stay. Be easier if it wasn't windy. Measure the 
fluff down to there. And then because our stay cell has to come above the dinghy, which is going to be here, we actually also have to measure how high up here the tack of the stay cell comes to. And we know, because we measured when the dinghy was here, that dinghy comes to here, so we've got to come down as low as we can. So we just measure the point to there as well. And then we need to go back towards the mast. So now we need to do the eye measurement for the stay cell. So that's straight down the mast, but down to where the deck joins the mast, which is a little bit of a fudge on Florence, because obviously we've got the coach roof here, makes it a bit difficult to measure. So now we need the measurement from the bottom of the inner forestay to the front of the mast, which is termed J in sailmakers terminology. So that's good. Yeah, so now we've got to measure where the Genoa track is in relation to where the stay sail is going to be, because that's where we're going to put the sheet through. So we're just measuring down the centre line of the boat from the inner forestay to where the car is. So that's the start of it, 0.2, and then we've got a really long Genoa track. So all the way back down here. Okay, and that should be everything that Rolly Tusker need to make us a new stay cell, which is going to be very exciting to try out. It's actually surprisingly easy to take the measurements to get your sails made. And then if you can just send your measurements in, you can get the sails delivered anywhere in the world. Yeah, that took, what, 10 minutes? 10 minutes, easy. Back in the loft, our existing sails have been carefully measured to make sure that the new ones will fit well. So this is the first step. The design team are just measuring our sails and then they'll take that over and input that information into their design programme. So we've got the measurements for our mainsail and Genoa. What happens now, Sven? We have put it into our sail design software. So what we have done first is to put all the rig measurements in, and after that the sail measurements, and we ensure that the sail measurements fit to your rig. And after that's done, we simulate it in 3D. So in 3D we check the sail shape, whether the shape is good, and we check whether everything fits to the uh, leach to the backstay, and uh, the sheeting point of the Genoa and point point, that's what we are checking our 3D software. So what's this then, Sven? This is my special recommendation to you. So it's a stay sail. So in heavy wind conditions, you don't have to weave your big Genoa and deform it and stretch it. So take your nice stay sail out. That's my nice present for you. Oh, fantastic. Awesome. <laughs> so how do we get the information for, that's on the computer at the moment and turn that into a set? Now we go from this process to the other process, now it comes to nesting. So now we nest all the panels as they fit to the sail cloth, to the floating table. And I show you that process now. This is our auto nesting software. So all the panels you have seen in our 3D software needs to be plotted. Here it shows the second, so after four seconds it found already a very good efficiency. So it's like playing Tetris, but made by a computer. Yeah. So and in 16 seconds, it's to perfect panel accuracy, everything nested. Uh, 16 se seconds is hard to beat. This Challenge Fastnet Dacron sailcloth is what we've been advised will be the best for our cruising mainsail and it's supposed to be more resistant to UV because it's got fatter fibres um, on both directions which are less likely to break down with the uh, UV from the sun. Once the panels have all been plotted onto the sailcloth, they come here for the individual panels to be cut out and ready for assembly. Our sails are actually some of the last to be cut out like this. Broly Tasker have a new laser cutting table about to go online and take over this part of the process. Once all the panels have been cut, they come down to the floor where they're stuck together with a double-sided tape along the seams, ready for sewing. We just popped back into the loft the next day and they're already starred on our Genoa.
summit is the final stage of the process. Once the sale is together, this is where it really comes to life, where all of the batten pockets and all of the fastenings and hardware are fitted to the sale, often by hand. So we're in one of the biggest sail lofts in the world and Amy has taken over the sail designer's computer. She's doing the really, really important bit, choosing the colours for the spinnaker. Yes. Okay. The book I'm showing. Yes. So if I click this one. Okay. I'm really happy with that. I'm really excited now. We just need the team to make the sail. Amy's got a new job. <laughs> I don't think, I think I get sacked very quickly. We want to say a huge thank you to Sven and the team at Rolly Tasker, not just for the amazing offer of sponsorship, but also for opening the loft to us and explaining the whole sale making process from start to finish. Now we just have to wait for the sales to be finished so that we can try them out. I'm like a kid on Christmas Eve. I'm so excited about our new sales. Can't wait to get our hands on them. We feel incredibly humbled that through sharing our journey, we now have such an amazing group of people supporting us to continue sailing around the world. Not just the team at Rolly Tasker Sales, but also our patrons, including our star patrons. Alan Becky, Kate and Peter Adkins, Robin Rima, John Bowler, Samuli Yarvanen, and John Gomez. Thanks guys. Next time, we'll be exploring the beautiful Thai Islands. We love reading all of your comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to catch the next one.